Welcome. That's right. New episode of The Grand and Group presents The Lockbox, Arizona's number one brother and sister real estate team right here in beautiful and hot Arizona. We're here for a new uh, podcast. I know it's been a little late, so um, some of you still know it as Arizona Real Estate Showcase, but it is now part of The Lockbox, which is also an internet TV show. And we have started filming again, so you'll be able to see those online on YouTube, Rumble, those different platforms here pretty soon. But meanwhile, for those of you that love the podcast, and thank you so much for listening, I'm Jason Grandin, your host. And we are here today to talk about some new things. And new things, when I I talk about that, so first of all, let's get to the real estate market. The real estate market has been, um, it's, it's definitely slowed down quite a bit. There's a lot of listings. But um, we're starting to see a change. I mean, we have we had higher interest rates, and quite honestly, in Arizona, it has been just hot. So school generally gets out the end of May, and then people take their vacations. And after July 4th, you start seeing a pickup as we get closer to school starting first week in August, which is crazy in its own right. So anyways, so we, and we're always talking about different things in real estate, this and that. So today I want to touch on something that, you know, it, it kind of gets me a little bit. So so you'll get these realtors. And trust me, hey, there are some great realtors out there. They're not all like the Grandin Group, Arizona's number one brother and sister real estate team, Stacy and Jason Grandin. But there's some good realtors out there. But we've got some and quite a few. And those are probably the ones because usually the bad ones are the ones that are the loudest that you hear. Today we're going to talk about investment properties okay so you get these realtors that come in and they're like oh yeah yeah man you got to uh, buy this house and you can rent it out and make a ton of money okay first of all that is not an investment that's not even a sound investment advice for anybody to give you that to tell you that so when we talk about investments there's different ways to go about it now i am not claiming in any way, shape, or form to be some investment guru. I'm just more of a common sense guy. Grew up in Arizona here. As, uh, for those of you that have been listening to the podcast a while, no. Grew up on a big horse ranch here. Um, I've always, myself, I've always been kind of an entrepreneur. My sister was a world-class, top-notch equine trainer. She trained uh, with some of the best people in the world. She trained some of the best horses. She's won incredible horse shows, and she's had just a numerous and numerous amounts of clients that she's taken to horse shows, won Scottsdale several times over, and stuff like that. So we grew up in the Arabian horse world. Me, I've always liked the business side of stuff, but I never really got involved in working with a corporation or anything like that. I worked at, you know, I, you know, starting jobs, you know, Dairy Queen. I did open Planet Hollywood and Chili's and did those kind of things while you are in school. But then, you know, we worked on the Arabian Horse Show for years, and that part of it, my sister was showing horses, my dad was the president, and I raised the money for them. So I've always liked the entrepreneurial spirit. And so when we talk about investments, I'm not talking about, hey, go in and buy a house for 300000 which is very hard to do, come in in Arizona, come in, buy a house for 300000 and then rent it out for $1,000, $1,500 a month. It's just not going to happen. And it's just, it's hard to do. So I'm going to give you my intake on some investment stuff, and you guys do what you want with it. But it's going to kind of maybe maybe make you think about things a little different than you've been thinking about when we talk about, hey, I've got some money. I don't want to put it in the bank. I don't want to put it in the stock market. What should I do with it? Okay? So we talk about investment properties, and the first thing that comes to mind is rentals. And that's probably 95% of the realtors out here. And I'm, I'm just throwing that number out there. Maybe not. But the ones that we hear about that we shouldn't be listening to, those realtors, let's just say 95% of them, they tell you, buy an investment property and then rent it out, okay? Here's, first of all, when you buy an investment property as a rental, you are one month away from going broke on that property, okay? Plain and simple, you are always one month away. They file bankruptcy, guess what? In the state of Arizona, you can't touch them for a few months. They file bankruptcy, you can't say, oh, well, you owe me money. You gotta still make that payment. Uh, during the whole COVID nonsense, same thing. People were saying, oh, I got COVID, I can't pay rent. But guess what? The landlord still had to pay the bank. The bank wasn't given any credits. So anyway, so if you're going to do the investment as far as doing a rental property, first of all, got to do the research on the areas. Now, personally, personally, as a owner of instantrenters.com, I like Section 8 renters. 
there's going to be a lot of people that have this bad taste in their mouth about them. Oh, they're deadbeats. They, they don't pay. They tear up the house. That's actually not true. So Section 8, first of all, is very hard to get on. It's a state-run program, which we all know anything run by the state sucks. But this program, I got to tell you, I like because they do pay you. And if they're late, they pay you late fees. So people have to get on the program, and there's checks. If you, as a landlord, decide to take a Section 8 renter, and that uh, renter tears up the house, you let the state know, and that person could potentially get kicked off of the assistance, and they don't want to because most of them, you know, some of them have jobs. The ones I've met have jobs. There's some that don't, but anyways, it's free money. So those ones are good, um, but you can't you can't buy a million dollar house and then rent it to a section. It just does, it doesn't make sense. So if you're looking to get a thousand dollars a month, you've got to buy something probably that ran you I don't know under one hundred fifty thousand dollars to purchase. And sometimes the areas tend to be a little less desirable, but if you're going to make that kind of investment into one of those homes, then maybe you should go in and start thinking about, okay, you know what, I don't like the area, but I'm going to fix this house up, rent it, and then I'm going to buy the next door neighbor. And then your uh, contribution to the community could be you're going in, fixing stuff up, and changing the demographics, getting out people that are you know want to make their life better, which is great. Okay, so that's one way to do investments. But if your realtor or somebody is telling you, hey, go buy this house for a million dollars, and then we're going to rent it out for 4000 the rental market's good, but you know what? Somebody who's making four thousand, or someone who's paying four thousand dollars a month, they've got to be making at least twelve thousand a month to cover that note. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff you got to check out. So, anyways, I'm not dogging it. I like that, those kind of properties, but what I want to get into is the investment. Oh, okay. Hey, before we get into the investment, let me clear a couple things up between investment properties too. With these realtors that are telling you to buy investment properties and rent them out for you know whatever. Okay, you've got two different types of renters now. Well, we've got more than that, but just for this conversation, we've got unfurnished houses and we've got furnished houses. Both of them. Do not let anyone tell you different. Both of these are two totally different beasts. All right? Again, do not let someone tell you, buy the house. You can either furnish or unfurnished. It's two totally different marketing platforms. It's two totally different beasts. It's two totally different renters that are going to be renting your house. Okay, so if you buy a house... And it's a, and you're gonna do this, you're gonna rent it out, you're gonna get a different amount of money unfurnished than you are furnished. Now, Arizona's also starting to pull rules together. Different cities have different rules. Scottsdale's getting very tough and it's oversaturated with furnished rentals. If you do a furnished rental, now are you going to do long term, meaning a year or more, or are you gonna do short term? Check with your HOA, check with the city. There's rules. Some places won't allow you to do less than 90 days. Some will allow 60 days. So now with that, you're going into seasonal rentals. So obviously, December through April are our prime months in, in Maricopa County, uh, Scottsdale, Phoenix, Perry's Valley. Those are your prime months. That's when if you have a three-bedroom, two-bath house decked out, furnished with a pool in, uh, let's just say, McDowell Mountain Ranch in Scottsdale, you're going to get a high dollar for it. You're going to get, you know, probably depending on the size of it, but let's just say anywhere north of 6000 bucks a month, okay? But you need to find that renter who wants to rent it for four, five, six months because you probably have a minimum. And if you don't, then you've got a different plan. And short-term rentals is a totally different beast, which I do not recommend getting into unless uh, we recommend one of the short-term agents out here for you, which do a great job. Unfurnished, you're renting it out for a minimum of a year. If your payment on the house, or yeah, you, you paid cash for it, but let's just say the house is worth six hundred thousand, most likely your payment's forty two hundred a month in general. So you need to get somewhere around that ballpark to rent it out. And you know what? It's it's a tough nut to crack. So, anyways, that's a discussion to have with a um, full time agent for your full time life realtor, preferably the Grandin Group and InstantRenters.com. So. I want to get into the meat of this um, of this investment conversation, and so when I'm talking about investments, my sister and I is, is you know we've told you in the past we operate up in we I handle down here in Maricopa County and so forth. She handles basically everything north of Black Canyon City, so uh, Mayor, Chino Valley, Prescott, Prescott Valley, Sedona, Flagstaff, Williams, which we have some great properties listed here, and I'm actually going to kind of talk about. Most of the properties we have up there. Um, okay, so let's just start with this. So investment property. So you want to buy a house, but yet you want to have an investment. 
Now, let's just say you're a horse person, all right? And I'm using that as an example. Not everybody's a horse person, but I'm gonna use that as an example in this situation just because I can relate to it and I'll be able to explain it faster. So, we have a 20-acre property in Prescott Valley, 7950 North Coyote Springs. Beautiful, 20 acres, Prescott Valley, 2.7 million. Now, I know that caught your attention. You guys are like, I'm not paying 2.7 million for an investment property. But wait, maybe you are. 2.7 million in beautiful Prescott Valley, Arizona. 45 minutes to Phoenix. 20, 25 minutes to downtown Prescott. Growing community. Tons of growth going on. Tons of people moving in. Restaurants, movie theaters. Everything you want to do is there. So we got that part out of there. So now we've got 20 acres that has a whole equine setup. 10 stall barn with large runs, office, tack room, grooming washes, uh, another 11 stall mare motel, which you can rent out. Those are, it's like a MD barn, but it's, it's see through all the way around. A four stall breeding barn with run stocks, five stall shed row barn. So, right there, you've got um, 26 stalls, okay? And now, if you take the 2,600, and you know, you're gonna get, we're demanding right now, uh, let's just say on the low end, $500 a month rent. So $500 a month times 26 stalls is $13,000. Now that's just on those barns. There's some other ones in there. There's some turnouts you can get. That's $13,000 when you purchase this property that's automatically coming in. On a $2.7 million investment, more than half of your mortgage payment with a 10% down is covered. Okay, so you following me here? So now you've got tons of room. This place got 20 RV hookups. Wait a second, 20 RV hookups? You mean to tell me I can rent out 20 different spots at, I don't know, $200 a month? There's another $4,000. And they, or not even monthly. You can go daily, two, $300 a day. People that are traveling across the country in the RVs don't necessarily want the, uh, those big camping places, the XOs or whatever they're called. They'd like to have a place like this, especially if you've got a place for their dogs to run, for the horses to be turned out and so forth. Investment, my friends, investment. There's a second home on this property. It's a tiny home with a loft. You can rent that out. There's also a three-bedroom home that if you choose to live in it, you've got yourself a home. So now you're living in a home and you can hire somebody to run the ranch part of it, get new uh, people in there. Pretty soon, if you had 50 head of horses in there, which is not hard to do, your entire mortgage is covered. You live in the house, which is away from the uh, barns. You got 20 acres. And regardless of the economy, your property's still going up. Investment, okay? Let's shoot over to Litchfield Park. Beautiful, beautiful two-acre property here that we uh, just put on the market a little over a month ago. Um, it's got irrigation. It's on the county island. Another investment property. So the people that are selling it actually live there, and they're moving. So, But they, they live in this property. And they have three horses. It's got three horse set up plus a huge turnout and irrigation. A place like this, somebody can go into, especially with the irrigation, which you're not going to get in a subdivision. You go in there, guess what? You can start growing grapes, plants, crops. You can bring in cattle. You got horses. You could, oh, this one's got an RV hookup as well. So guess what? You can rent out the RV hookup. Basically, anything that can go on, you can make money off of. So this place here, we're at eight ninety nine. dollars So you're essentially $900,000. RV hookup, you could easily rent out for, I don't know, 100 bucks a day. And so, and you'll stay busy. Plus, if you decided to rent out the horse part of it, three stalls at 500 bucks minimum each, that's another $1,500. Guess what? Your mortgage has just been cut in half. And you've got a property that you're getting below value in this market. And pretty soon you know what? You're well above that and it hasn't cost you anything to own it. All right. This other one we have, and this is another great investment property for those that don't necessarily want horses, but maybe you do. We've got one up in Chino Valley. And again, I'm just using the ones we have listed for examples. There's thousands of these things. So this particular one we have up here in Chino Valley is beautiful. It's a mobile home. And, and, and trust me when I tell you, you wouldn't even guess it. The manufactured home is absolute, absolute quote unquote luxury. Three bedroom, two bath. This how this property is uh, nine acres, almost it's a little over eight, is fully sustainable. So my sister and I went over there. The guy was baking bread from stuff 100% from the property. 
100% sustainable. So for those of you that preppers and stuff like that, this is a great place. But get a hold of this. It's got an uh, RV hookup, which you can add more. It's got a well. Plus, it's got um, it's an equine setup. So you've got, I think, believe it was a 15-stall barn with tons of hookups. You can rent this entire thing out. Now, for $7.99, this thing will more than cover it. You could bring in a trainer to train the horses, and they can rent the stuff out, and it's going to more than cover your $4,200 a month payment. Possibilities are endless, friends. So it's, it's just the way you look at it. And finally, we got this other one here. I don't want to keep bragging about our properties, but we got some cool properties. Got one in Apache Junction. Now, we met with the, uh, we talked to the mayor of Apache Junction, and this particular street, Ironwood, the city is going through, and they want to make this the new, quote unquote, clean, the city, the middle of the city, and this is Apache Junction. So this property here, that acre and a quarter, it's got four RV hookups, it's got a three bedroom, one bath, a two bath house with one kitchen that you could split right down the middle, add a kitchen. You've got a duplex. You've just doubled your income for less than a thousand bucks. Now it's also got an outdoor patio. So now you can rent RVs, host parties, weddings, Airbnb for $775. You making money each month on that. Plus, the city wants to revamp stuff, so getting zoning changes is going to be good. I mean, it could be an RV park, it could be a storage. The next door neighbor directly connected to this property just sold for a million seven, and we have this one on for seven seventy five. So, friends, when we're talking about investment properties, some of you want to listen. Being a landlord is a full time job, any way you cut it. So, if you decide you want to be a landlord and you want to get into the investment properties, that's fine. But just know that it is a full time job, and it's not just sitting back collecting the money on the first of the month. It is way more than that. And it, it can be very difficult. I mean, we've had, my wife and I, we had a situation. We rented, uh, we bought an investment house in Desert Ridge, bought it, closed on it. Next day, we rented to some quote-unquote friends. The next day after that, they filed bankruptcy, and we couldn't touch them for six months. But guess what? We still had to make that $2,200 a month payment on that house on top of our other house that we own, on top of the kids, on top of all our personal expenses we had. Life can change pretty quick. So... When you guys are thinking about investment properties, there's tons of ways to go. Hey, commercial is a great way to go. Investing in some apartment complexes, if you can find the guys that aren't scumbags, investing in apartment complexes and REITs are a good way to go as well. Those you want to check out, um, you really got to vet the people on that. But sometimes those can be really good investments, especially in a wild rental market. And we're going through that now. We're kind of coming out of it a little bit, but it's still, still great. So... If you're thinking about investing, reach out to the Grandin Group, Arizona's number one brother and sister real estate team, and let's talk. I mean, you don't have to know about animals or agriculture and stuff like that. Um, you know, once you get used to somebody in the back of the property every week parking their RV, but you're getting paid for it, things like that become a habit, and you're like, you know what? I'm paying for a property that's appreciating. I'm getting paid. People are paying for me to live here. That, people is a great, great investment. And hey, they are all over the state. So now you don't have to go to Scottsdale and say, oh, I gotta buy a Scottsdale house to make a perfect investment. No, why? You got things that are gonna draw you more money and stuff. And there's people with experience in these areas too. So there's still enough room that you can maybe hire project managers or general managers to take care of some of this stuff for you. So anyways, I just wanted, I kinda wanted to give you the take on the um, investment stuff. So investing in Arizona real estate is awesome. There, no one's going to tell you different. It's a great, great place to put your money. Um, work on getting the best deal you can. I mean, just because someone's asking X doesn't mean you have to pay X. Get creative. Uh, another thing that's been very popular out here, and again, you got to watch the HOAs on this, but assisted living homes. So we've got a few clients. Their job is they buy investment homes where they can rent them to um, assisted living people. So they've got a group they work with, they buy the house, they take the house, they, let's just say their payment is $4,000 a month on a house. They pay cash, but it would be equivalent to $4,000 a month. They rent it to this assisted living home for $7,000 a month. So they're making $3,000 a month extra on what their payment is. And then the assisted living, they run their business out of there. They hold all the licensing, they pay all the insurance, the taxes, blah, blah, blah. That person's making $7,000 a month on their $400,000 investment. People, there's great investments out here. So 
listen, I, it does get confusing, but you know what? Feel free to reach out to my sister, Stacy, or myself. And hey, if, if you want to invest in real estate, let's do it. Let's get you some great places. We are not going to steer you wrong. We're going to make sure it works for you. And, um, you know, if you don't mind uh, getting creative, there's some ways to do it. And you're going to make a lot of money, and I think you'll be very happy. So, with that said, that is our uh, newest episode of The Lockbox. The investment issue was what we'll call this one. So, hey, get involved. If you guys have questions, reach out to me, uh, 480-276-2954. Or you can reach out to my sister, especially if you're looking to be in cooler country, Flagstaff, Prescott, Sedona, uh, 602-312-5610. Or as always, go to the grandengroup.com. The grandengroup.com. I answer all the emails. Um, reach out to us. Hey, and again, I want to thank you. I, every week, uh, well, I know it's been almost a month since the last podcast, so I apologize. It's just so busy trying to get in here. So I'm trying to schedule my time so we can get these done on a weekly basis. But um, hey, feel free to reach out to us anytime. This is your show, and thank you for making us one of the top real estate podcasts in Arizona. We get quite a few comments, and what's great is, unless you watch the shows, you probably wouldn't have any idea who I am. And it's funny, my wife and I will go to a restaurant, and they're like, hey, we uh, saw your podcast, or we heard your podcast. Great job. And I'm like... How do they uh, know that? So anyways, thank you guys. It, it, again, this is your show. If there's questions you have, things you want to talk about, let's do it. We try to stay out of the politics and stuff, but you know what? We're going to have to touch on that a little bit maybe on the next show because um, we have a governor right now who is trying to uh, stop new homes from being built because she's worried about new water coming in. So it's it's... A little more than just saying that what she's doing, there's been a fight going on, but trust me when I tell you there's plenty of water here, just a matter of these government officials doing their stuff to get uh, things done. Anyways, investment properties, reach out to us. I'm Jason Grandin with the Grandin Group, Arizona's number one brother and sister team, powered by one of the largest agencies in Arizona, my home group. Reach out to us. Let's find you an investment property. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks again. Have a great week.